Mm-hmm. All right, what's going on, everybody? We are back with a new episode uh, from the Conscious Approach channel. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. Um, if you're watching this on the YouTube channel, if you're watching this on the Facebook page, wherever you're watching, appreciate you for tuning in. JV Wins is here once again with Dogon SS for your garden variety uh, social commentary. So uh, let's talk about this real quick. I saw this on World Star. I'm pretty sure the origin of the video is TikTok because it seems like every video now that ends up going viral in any kind of way originated on TikTok. It's starting to make me think that maybe I need to get on TikTok because I currently am not. Um, I don't have enough hours in the day to add yet another social media profile into my bandwidth. <laughs> so I have not gotten onto the TikTok way, but apparently I need to because there's a ton of content out there, including this. So uh, this is a video uh, of a woman describing how a real man should be acting or behaving. Uh, and I guess the point that she is trying to make is that uh, conventionally the idea of how a real man is supposed to act uh, according to what most women think has been wrong this whole time. And, and, and she is saying, this is really how it's supposed to be. And so you women need to get up on game uh, in terms of how to recognize a real man when you see one, I think is what she's trying to say. I think that's uh, what she's saying. So, yeah. So it kind of sounds like that's what she's trying to say here. So uh, let's see what she has to say, and then we will opine as we usually like to do. Let me tell you, I had a spot of the lane even when he's single. One of the biggest tips is when he's comfortable being posted up, being posted out with different women all the time. Real men, a real boss mentality, a boss status, don't want to be seen with nobody if it ain't his wife and his girlfriend. He don't want no hoes, get no clout, or even being attached to his name, even if he is single and out here dating until he get the right one. Y'all got to stop thinking that that's attractive. I cut a dude off just for that reason alone. You're goofy with no standards and no self-respect. Shit, I might even think you got some. I like men with standards and class. You're not really lit until you're untouchable. Being a pass around is distasteful. You ain't nothing to have for real, and I'm going to treat you just as such. There you go. So uh, a couple of layers to unpack there, right? So it kind of sounded like she was saying that it is not attractive to be a man who is kept by multiple women. And women need to understand that that's not really what attractive is. It kind of sounds like that was a part of what she was trying to say. There was some other stuff there too. Uh, that was one of the things that I peeled away. Um, go ahead, floor is yours. Um, honestly, um, it wasn't making sense. I had to keep, I had to watch it a few times just to understand what point she was trying to make. Uh, this was really personal, I feel like, for her. Uh, I think this is a... I think what she was trying to say is that she doesn't like how men are dating nowadays, where they're filling out their options and they're trying to figure things out and they're not committing to certain things, uh, you know, prematurely. And he's weighing his options. And so the thing about men is we're not really as covert honestly, with how we have our rosters and our teams, you know, uh, women t tend to be a lot more covert of how they have their, you know, their guys in the shadows. So men are pretty much obvious, at least when initially when, you know, they're dating and getting to know each other, the woman, she's going to pretend she's absolutely 100% single, uh, nobody in, you know, in the wings or nothing like that. So the guy, you know, Hey man, well, you know, I'm single. So I'm going to weigh my options. I'm not committing to anything, blah, blah, blah. And so I think she's tired of that. And she's associating that with lamery because she thinks that those guys are playing around. I think that's what she was getting at. And then from the other side of what she was talking about, a boss guy, I don't know what the hell that means. But at least from where I think she's getting at is what she believes a, a mature man is. And so she's projecting something that she's honestly probably never had it or experienced before in her life. So that's why that's why honestly 
her idea of a man, you know, she said that the 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 first guy didn't have standards, but the boss guy does. The the first guy, he does have standards because, well, he's weighing his options and he's not settling for anybody. So I don't know what she's really getting. That's why it really doesn't make sense. This doesn't sound well thought out. If she really wanted to get her point across, I think she would have to unpack more. But for, from the layers that she gave me, it seems pretty narrow, uh, seems pretty not well thought out. And I think it's just um, ironic that she would be sitting there telling, you know, men how to behave and how to act while she's, you know what I'm saying, acting masculine. <laughs> I mean, her, her, her posture you know what I'm saying? Her stance in that chair is pretty aggressive. And I'm not catching feminine vibes from that. So it's kind of weird that she's trying to articulate what a man needs to be when it's pretty obvious to me that she's not fully representing what a woman is. So she seems to be a little bit confused herself. And so I think, I think personally, again, I think she's speaking from personal experience. And that's why this seems so targeted. Uh, she's she's talking about her exes and uh, or guys that she dealt with. And she's over that. So now she's assuming and hypothesizing what a real man is. But she just literally explained the first guy. So I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, man. I, uh, it's, it's, it's crazy how sometimes we kind of get similar interpretations. Mm -hmm. I think she is definitely speaking from personal experience. Uh, I don't know who this woman is, but I'm looking at the video and I'm just going to assume based upon her appearance and the way that she is speaking, that she is one of the many women today who operate in the modern day sense of dating, which is I'm going to uh, I'm going to be a part of the the, the club scene. You know, I, I, I kind of explained this type of atmosphere in the last video that we did. She strikes me as the type of woman who spends a lot of time, or maybe she used to spend a lot of time making sure that she is in whatever city the Super Bowl is in, because she's at all Super Bowl parties. She's at every NBA All-Star weekend. Uh, she goes to the Classic every year. Uh, she's going to the club pretty much every other weekend. She goes to the strip club a lot. She's one of those women. And women like that tend to go for a particular type of guys. And, and she's probably been burned by those guys because guys like that do nothing but burn women. That's what they do. For whatever reason, these women get with guys who operate in these spaces, in the professional athlete entertainment spaces, and then they get bewildered whenever they realize that those men are gonna treat them the same way that they treat every other woman that they come in contact with. Exactly. So she's probably been jaded several times throughout her dating history because of the types of men that she has chosen herself. Mm -hmm. And so now that she's gotten jaded because of the fact that she's been burned multiple times, she wants to kind of reinvent the wheel and try and describe what a real man is supposed to be acting like. The only thing that I'll give her partial credit for is when she started talking about how women should not find men who portray themselves as playing the field as attractive. Um, you know, I, I once had a friend, not once, I do still have a friend. This is a woman we used to hang out from time to time. And she was one of these women who was constantly experiencing cognitive dissonance when it comes to her dating situation. Because uh, she was always talking about how characteristically she wants to be with a certain kind of guy but the kind of guys who always piqued her interest were the opposite of that. And so I used to tell her like, you know, your greatest flaw is the fact that what your brain is telling you is good for you is the complete opposite of what your vagina is telling you is good for you. And those things you find, you find difficulty in reconciling those two diametrically opposed, um, uh, you know, levels of attraction, essentially the brain and the vagina. Mm -hmm. And to her credit, she admitted it like, yeah, I don't know how to overcome that. 
Um, I know logically that this is the kind of guy who would be good for me, but in terms of what excites my emotions, it's the guys over here. And usually the guys who excite these women's emotions are guys who keep multiple women. Because for whatever reason, women perceive a guy who has multiple women as desirable, just opposed to a guy who does not have multiple women. That guy must therefore inherently be undesirable. And so I'm not going to desire him because if I did desire him, where are his women? That's how they gauge whether they should like a guy or not, based upon the fact that he has other girls. But then they get with the guy and then they realize that they're just one of the many girls and then they get frustrated. Well, you are, ma'am, having difficulty reconciling your inability to, like, sort of consolidate your, your, your attraction points. And it kind of sounds like she's speaking from that place. Um, she's probably trying to goat herself mentally into finding a certain type of character of a man as appealing, even though her history and her behavior suggests that she's not on that wavelength. And so those two things are coming out in her inability to effectively articulate what it is that she's trying to say to your point, because I as well was confused. Like I was listening to what she was saying and I was like, okay, are you suggesting that good men are desirable or are you suggesting that desirable men need to start acting good? Because those are two different things. And, um, I think she, if you if you asked her which of those is the right thing, she probably don't even know because she can get in front of that camera and she can say all of that stuff all day long. Mm -hmm. But come this weekend, I don't know what city she live in, but she's going to be on the scene. She's going to be on the scene. And when she gets on the scene, she's not going to be looking for the type of guy that she just tried to describe in that video. Exactly. She's going to be going for what she has typically gone for throughout her dating history. And it's the same thing that most women nowadays I find are doing. And so, yeah, I didn't really get what she was putting down, but I do think that the deeper thing, I think the deeper point behind it is she's hundred percent speaking from, from personal experience. Um, you know, her appearance, just her appearance just kind of screams. Uh, these are the kind of guys that I have routinely gone for, but I'm tired of getting burned. So what she is essentially trying to do is find the unicorn, the perfect man who operates in the streets in the way that gets her juices going, but is also going to be a guy who's not talking to other women because according to her, that's quote, not attractive. But those very same qualities are the things that attract you to those same men. So I think Lucy, you got some explaining to do. Is is how I took that. Yeah, and e even even the part where she was saying that the boss man, um, he don't want to be seen nowhere with nobody unless it's his woman. Well, how is he going to find out you're going to be his woman unless he takes you out? That's the part. <laughs> that's the part that. That's what I'm saying. Like it doesn't. What she's saying is not making sense. It doesn't seem so, practical. Yeah. No. So. That's why I feel like there's a deeper layer to what she's talking about with these lame dudes. And she needed to do a better job of describing these lame dudes because the guys that she the, the guys that she was saying that were lame, that's a pretty big bucket that she just described. And then so she goes on to say that, hey, the boss man, you know, he don't want to be out here with all these women and stuff like that. Well, I mean, I don't I don't know. How do you know that? And so what the, the whole thing is that she's just explaining the mature man and she just throws boss on top of it. And again, this is again where things get confused because at least she sounds confused because she's throwing boss on there as if that means something. So she has this image of what a boss is and that's what, what a boss man is. And she's she wants that. So this is the same delusion that it sounds like she just came from. So she's going to get the same results. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so this is how delusion sounds. <laughs> and so this this woman here, she's really trying to. That's what I'm saying. She contradicted herself and all in the same minute. That's why I was like, hey, I, I think you better. But the thing is, is that well, it goes viral. And so the problem is, I mean, guys, I mean, once we see it, we're going to get our laughs in and have our choice words, but. There's probably some sisters out there that's absorbing this in the capacity of, yeah, because I'm a boss bitch, you know, and I, I need a boss man, yeah. a, a boss whatever. 
you know? And so they're thinking, yeah. So now if you talk to a guy and he meets you, you know, day one, whatever, and y'all are trying to get to know each other and she asks, hey, you know, what's your status? You know, you, you're you dealing with somebody right now. Eh, you know, I'm talking to somebody, you know, whatever. What is he supposed to say if this woman is speaking gospel? Oh, you're not going to be taking me out and some other woman. I'm not trying to be seen. Oh, what? What are you talking about? So this woman obviously sounds like she got played, too. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And so her whole thing is like, oh, yeah, well, I'm over getting played. I'm the player now or whatever she's at. And it's just like, look, girl, it is what it is. All right. The comment section was getting at her, too, of course. And, you know, basically, basically getting at her saying, hey, you got a sleeve like a man. All right. You got on a man's watch. You talking brick talk. It's like, you know, what kind of man are you going to attract? Yeah, what is this boss? Yeah. Explain what are you this doing? Boss. They got at her. They got at her uh, paste on hair. You know, that quote unquote baby hair she got on her face Which and the fake cool. lashes yeah. and the pounds of makeup. But I get what the makeup thing is for some women, because I've heard women say it's therapeutic. Teach their own. I'm not a woman. So, you know, do your thing. But at the same time, when they have these pounds of makeup like this and the 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 lashes, you know, the eight inch lashes or whatever the hell they got going on, it's it just this also hollers, um, yeah, like you say, on the scene, uh, aka not suitable for wifeage. So it's just oxymoronic that somebody that it doesn't seem like wife material is telling other women what to look for in a husband, even though it doesn't look like she will ever achieve this goal. So yeah, it's, it's, it's actually quite humorous if you look at it. Yeah, well, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to reinvent the wheel. That's what a lot of them, like, like they try to rewrite what it means to be wife or girlfriend material. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just think, you know, it's similar to, the, to, to when we talked about the women who are on that podcast before trying to create these delineations between a man who works versus an entrepreneur and how one is desirable versus the other. And so I, you know, we, you and I kind of went back and forth on that. And based upon what they were saying, what I was gleaning was Mm -hmm. they just want a dude who's a baller. That's what they want, but they're coding it as entrepreneur to try and make it seem as though it's an esteem that it really isn't. And so, you know, you're, you're not really, because if it was really about, if it was really about entrepreneurism versus not, mm-hmm. then you would get with a struggle rapper who was broke because he's an entrepreneur, but you'll right. never do that. So it's a specific type of profile that they're describing, which represents like a 10th of 1% of a population. You know, it, it's an even smaller percentage than that little piece of the Brooklyn Nets that Jay-Z used to own, like 0.1 of point two percent or whatever the number was like it just doesn't even practically make sense and that's what this chick is doing with this boss stuff like what she wants let's be let's be honest what she wants is like i don't know a rapper or a dude in the streets who's faithful to one female that's what she wants but she's coding it as a boss so that she doesn't come off as that type of chick stereotypically who goes after guys who are rappers or entertainers or dudes in the streets because they're insecure about that label. And so they do everything they can to sidestep it by throwing in all of these obscure qualifiers to try and throw people off the scent. So they'll use words like entrepreneur or boss or whatever other adjective, like all of these weird words that you want to describe. And it's like, listen, lady, you know exactly what it is that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Now, what you're looking for isn't practical, but you'll keep searching for it until you hit the wall. And then when you hit the wall, you're going to then have the sensibleness to go for what it is that you should have been going for when you were in your prime. But those guys aren't going to go for you because they don't see that as a fair trade. Uh, not when, you know, no, those guys aren't going to go for you when you've already given your best years, especially physically, to something that wasn't them to begin with. So they're completely trying to reinvent the wheel. And she is entirely a chick who's on the scene, I believe, and is just somebody who's saying, can all you guys who also like to be on the scene just pick me to be with just me 
and 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 relinquish everything that you've been doing up until this point and give me what I want, which is a quote unquote baller who will only be seen with me and me exclusively. And it's like, listen, sit down for a second and just think about how realistic that is. It's not like it's just it's not going to happen. It's you know, I'm not trying to be a pessimist here, but ma'am, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And the only time, the, the only way that your fortunes are going to change is that you're going to be with a guy who is a quote unquote boss in the real sense, not in the fake social media hip hop sense that you're thinking of. Right. It's, for you, it's, for, it's for you to change your mentality. But, you know, women like, you know, women rarely change their feathers until it's too late. And then they, you know, are once it's too late, then they, you know, kind of, you know, think about the fact that it's too late and then they get discouraged because now time is against them. So then they start complaining about time constructs. So, you know, they just find new things to complain about based upon the particular phase of the life that they're in. But at the end of the day, this is a, this is sour grapes and it's a lot of complaining about something. It's, it's, it's people in this case, a woman who is, who is the engineer of her own misfortune. Uh, trying to come from up under her misfortune while making no attempts to change her priorities or her preferences whatsoever. And so it, when you don't engage in that form of self-improvement, you're going to continue to get what you get. And at the end of the day, like I, you know, just like I like to say, you kind of have no one to blame but yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but and and the irony again, is that her talking about the boss guy being classy. <laughs> and looking at her, she doesn't look classy. And that, again, the irony of what are you talking about? So, like, I can't, I mean, her looking like this <clears throat> or whatever, you know, take her to a classy place. People going to look at her like, you know, is this, you know, she is she treating this like because she's gonna wear some dress that accentuates things, sleeve out, lashes on, the whole nine. <laughs> yeah. We weave glued to her face like it is now. Yeah. And then, she, then she's gonna be sitting there, you know, thinking she's classy at my ballroom function. <laughs> Embarrassing me. All right. I'm but I don't, I don't, I don't, but see that that's and that's what's so interesting is in her mind, yeah. she ain't thinking about ballroom functions. I really think that what she's trying to get at is I want me a gangster who is faithful to one woman. And that one woman is me. That's what she wants. So, so when she talks about the, the class with which she thinks of mm -hmm. is the class that is rooted in oh, the type of social ecosystem that is inherent in those types of people, mm -hmm. whatever that is, because I don't operate in that world, but whatever people like that do, and they define that as classy. That's yeah. what she's thinking about. She's not thinking about. She's not thinking about her corporate America boyfriend taking her to a work function or to a professional conference. She ain't thinking about that. She's not thinking about that. Well, she's thinking about. about no, 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 I'm just saying. She, I, I, that is not what she's thinking about. What she's thinking about is she wants to be with her boss. Who's going to? You know, they're gonna be in whatever car that they in when it's you know some popular event going on in some city, you know, pick some, you know, city, you know, she wants to be in, I don't, I, I can't even think of something off the top of my head, like, you know, being in Atlanta or something or, or going to Essence Festival in New Orleans or something like that with her boss boyfriend or whatnot. And that's classy, I guess. Mm -hmm. And, you know, looking like a hip hop couple, like, you know, a glorified yeah, version yeah, of, of Gucci Mane and, 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 and whatever his wife's name is. Yeah, and that's what they're doing. But of course, she has no compunctions about whether he's seeing any other women because he's only with her. That's what she's thinking of in her mind. Right, right, right. There you go. You nailed it. She wants the Gucci uh, yeah. marriage. Yeah. She, she, wa she wants that. Um, you had said, it, yeah, hip hop boss. So yeah. She, she doesn't want an actual real life boss. It's, yeah, exactly. An actual, an actual real life boss may scoff at some of the activities that she finds entertaining. <laughs> so, and again, man, you know, it is what it is. Um, but she was speaking from so on high, way on top of that soapbox, that it's, I mean, she's allowed to have her preferences. But when you're attacking a whole, uh, you know, constituency <laughs> of men, 
like how she did. Like basically, because basically she described me on that first bracket. Yeah, oh, yeah. Basically, yeah. where, yeah, you know, hey, single guy, well, hell, I have to weigh my options. Hey, it's crazy out here. Are you a crazy person? I have to find out. So let me date you. Let me find out what's going on. And hey, yeah, I might be talking to somebody else. Big whoop. You're probably talking to somebody else too. Exactly. So what's the big deal here? You know? And so, um, and weighing my options, finding the right thing. And yeah, let, let's go ahead and do this. I feel like that's respectful. I feel like that's having standards. You know what I'm saying? So whatever person, whatever somebody just absolutely dunked on her and just, you know, had her feeling, you know, some type of way, uh, may have been recent, may have been old, who knows? But she, uh, this experience that she's speaking from, this is, I wouldn't say this is the experience of all women. And so she's just speaking from some place. And I think because, again, she's coming off like she's a boss, like as if we should listen to her. Somebody's gonna be like, oh well, hey man, you know that's I don't know who this is. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but she's coming off as if I should know her. Again, this yeah. is part of her ego, you know. Yeah. So of course she wants somebody that's that would mount her. So a hip hop man that has more ego than her. And I again that's tapping on your point to where, yeah, you know, I want somebody with equal amount of sauce as me. More yeah. sauce. And he he doesn't cheat on me. <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't ask me to cook. He takes me out. We go to France. And it's like, oh, this is great. Yeah. <laughs> great. What did you do? My vagina is a vagina. And it's yeah. like, damn, that's a good point. Hey, you do deserve things. <laughs> it's ridiculous, bro. So, yeah, man, this madness that um, again, just being, uh, you know, propagated all over the internet from the blind leading the blind. Um you know, honestly, you know, one glance uh, was all I needed to be. I mean, honestly, you know, again, this is one of those situations where if I saw her in public, even if we interacted, you know, and me and her interacted, me, I would automatically. Oh, yeah, she's a cool person, but I'm not interested. Mm-hmm. And she probably said, well, yeah, that's fine. But yeah. I would I wouldn't be interested because of how dominant she comes off. She comes off as a person that would try to have power struggles with their man. You know, she sounds, she, she seems like a masculine type. So, yeah, man. So to each their own, I don't like masculine women. You don't like quote unquote lame uh, men. So, you know, it, it is what it is, but she, yeah, she, yeah. she definitely doesn't fit my bill. Sorry. It exactly is what it is, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I just, I 100% believe that that was coming from a personal place. Yeah. And, you know, you know, she, she, like I said before, she is the engineer of her own misfortune. And she, like a lot of people, not just women, but people in general, they are willing participants in their own insanity. They do the same actions and behaviors repeatedly, trying to get different results. And when they don't get those results, they get on their soapbox and complain about it. She's not trying to get with a salary, classy corporate America guy. She wants a hip hop boss type street dude. That's what she wants. But she's trying to suggest that those dudes need to stop their entire behavior and change what they do in order to fit her worldview. And that's just not going to ever, ever happen because those types of guys will always not be with one female at a time, let alone with somebody such as you who probably insists on at least half the time being the star of the show. So good luck with that. You know, yeah, I, I, you know, I just I like to feature videos like this because it's a cautionary tale. Because mm-hmm. we speak a lot about how prevalent this type of mindset is yeah. uh, across the board, not just with people or women who come from the type of background that she may come from, but just how normalized and mainstream is becoming based upon the prevalence of it and our exposure to it. And so, you know, you might have a lot of people, a lot of women who think like this who come from a background that is opposite hers. And so, you know, I just like to talk about this kind of stuff to let you know how completely impractical it is Mm -hmm. Uh, and how if you continue to think like this, you will eventually be someone who is staring down the barrel of 40. And then when you're 40, you'll be complaining about how you're single when you have plenty of chances to not be. So um, good luck to this chick. I'm pretty sure she'll I'm pretty sure her phone has several 
club promoters, DJs, and rappers, <laughs> and a couple NBA players, and NFL players, and something like that. You Boss know? entrepreneurs. Yeah, yeah, right. Entrepreneurs, yeah. <laughs> Boss men, entrepreneurs. All right, next up, we have a.